video shows the step-by-step -step process of structurally repairing a foundation crack using epoxy resin. Step one is to remove all the dust and foreign material from the area to be repaired. Epoxy injection will require mounting injection ports and capping the crack with epoxy paste. For the surface sealer to adhere properly, the area along the crack must be clean and porous. This can be done with a wire brush or a wire wheel attachment on your grinder. Step 2, using epoxy crack paste, you're going to attach surface mount ports over the crack. Because number 602 crack paste has only a 7 to 10 minute pot life, you will want to mix a smaller batch than what Mike is mixing here. He's done epoxy injection every day for the last 15 years. Number 602 crack paste is available in side-by-side -side cartridges to automatically give you a perfect one-to-one -one ratio. So all you have to worry about is getting it completely mixed to a swirl-free consistency. Anytime you're working with epoxies, it's a good idea to wear long pants, a long sleeve shirt, gloves, and safety glasses. Port bases are coin rolled through the epoxy paste to apply epoxy to the bottom of the port without plugging the port's barrel. Port place is determined by the thickness of the crack. The wider the crack, the farther the ports can be placed from one another. Generally, ports are placed about every six inches. After the ports are placed, additional batches of epoxy paste are mixed to seal the crack and around the ports. Normally, the top one eighth inch of the crack is left unsealed, and you're going to see why in just a couple of minutes. Any portion of the crack above ground level will also need to be sealed on the outside of the foundation. Surface Seal's only purpose is to hold the epoxy resin in place until it hardens. After the ports are applied and the surface has been sealed, the only way in or out of the crack will be through the ports. This portion of the job is where the most of attention to detail is required. Epoxy resins are very thin and if even a pinhole area is left unsealed, resin will leak through it.
As I said earlier, Mike's been doing injection work for a long time, and the quality of his trial work shows it. For those of us with less experience, CPR offers Surface Slick. Surface Slick is a finishing aid that can be applied to the surface seal before it hardens so that the surface can be smoothed out with a gloved hand. Number 1001 injection resin in side-by-side -side tubes is available in low viscosity, medium viscosity, high viscosity, and even a thixotropic gel. From hairline to half inch wide, we've got the right viscosity for any crack. Prior to installing your static mixer, always make sure your cartridge plungers are evened out and resin flows from both sides. Starting at the lowest port, pump epoxy resin until it flows from the port above. Then hit the pressure relief bar on the injection gun, plug the port you are injecting, and move on to the next port. Residential concrete has a compressive strength of around 3,000 PSI with an internal bond strength of under 400 PSI. 1001 injection epoxy has a compressive strength over 14,000 PSI and an internal bond strength of approximately 1,500 PSI. Basically, the area you're repairing will be much stronger than the rest of the foundation. Earlier we mentioned leaving the top 1 8 inch of the crack unsealed. This is done so that you can see when you fill the crack. If you surface seal to the very top of the crack, resin will flow over the top of the band board and generally cause a mess. After you filled the crack, check each port for resin and top off any ports that need it. 